vagina big sticks extra dicks there's not there's no vagina in this future but Gus and I are gonna put top hats and monocles on our dicks and our dicks are gonna do the whole thing I'm gonna say fuckery a lot isn't weird boner your thing? penis blowback <laughs> but that's not nearly as hot I don't wanna hear that in, a, in any theme song nipple milk cocktail this mic is attuned to sex appeal fucking cunt the right. dick's been stacked against us did you say the dick has been stacked against us what else that's a story of my life dude <laughs> God, dude, it's the worst. Do you know who gets a call every Wednesday evening <laughs> to get yelled at about the podcast? I think that nice. was a, that was Jeff's greatest hits. Wow, man! <laughs> the only thing sadder than all those things I said is the guy that had to go through every podcast to grab them. Did that start off with dicks, dicks, extra dicks? <laughs> it did. did I hear dick blowback in there? I what is uh, it? penis blowback? A I think it was. Blowback. I don't know what that is. It sounds awful. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thanks to what's his name here. Uh, Hellshanks from the website for that wonderful podcast intro. <laughs> Thanks, Hellshanks. Hellshanks. So, bouquet of filth. I think even he said it sounded like a like a horny twelve year old made it. <laughs> Did you say bouquet of filth? Yeah, that's, that's kind of poetic. I'm just going to classify like it. Yeah, good job. You, Hallmark's going to be uh, marketing that next year for Valentine's Day. The bouquet shit of filth, fuckers. Just another one of our great ideas down the toilet. Yeah, stolen. So this week we got Griffin, Jeff, and Gus. Did you forget my name? No, I was trying to think about what <laughs> order I was going to go in. No, alphabetical or left to right based you on where you're sitting to me. We got okay. the uh, we got the three G's. Yeah, triple G. That means it's going to be an awful podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to get so, over as quickly as possible. Last week, for the first time ever, we broke into the uh, top twenty-five uh, most listened to podcasts on iTunes. Hey, congratulations! Big deal. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. Number twenty-four, I think we were. Number twenty-four. The, uh, the budget cuts are already affecting NPR. <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking, they're, their stranglehold on the top podcast is weakening. Uh, we'll see if we can if we can recreate that magic. I doubt it. Recreate that magic. <laughs> what have you guys been up to? I, I, what, what were you doing out there, Griffin? I saw you with a drill <laughs> doing something on the front door. Um, I was just Brandon is not reinstalling <laughs> like locks or whatever and like changing door and handles. Why and. Uh, you know, I don't know. I still that's uh, still not clear to me. Nobody knows. Okay. So he decided to go and change all of our door handles. So, um, but he needed help drilling because because um, nobody here drills. He, I walk up and he and Carrie are, are going for about two hours. When I walk up and I go, why don't you guys just call a locksmith? It would already be done. It cost you like fifty bucks. And Brandon explained to me that you don't get locks from locksmiths. And I was like, excuse me? He goes, yeah, he's not going to have the right lock for this door. This is a special lock. Like, who the fuck wouldn't have – like who is more a fucking key to the lock industry than the locksmith? I mean the guy drives around in a little truck full of locks, all kinds of locks, all manner of locks yeah. and ways to open and install them. And uh, Brandon was explaining to me that it was just not necessary, that it's a very easy process that he's got under control. An hour later, I see my wife in high heels – I'm sorry, coworker in high heels <laughs> drilling the door because apparently that's a skill set Brandon doesn't have. He, he, might, he might wear heels. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that's also a skill. I was referring to the drilling. I'm pretty sure he's got that skill set. <laughs> no, he came up and he was like, hey, Griffin, can I get your opinion on this? I'm like, okay. So then he was showing me like the situation. I was like, yeah. I guess this situation? Just... <laughs> <laughs> um, please keep your shirt on. <laughs> my, my point wasn't that Brandon couldn't eventually get it done if you throw enough rooster teeth manpower and people at it. And right now we've got <laughs> – Women power. Right now we've got three people, Carrie, Brandon, and Griffin all working to get this one lock installed. Yeah. It wasn't – And then Jeff walks up and he's like, well like, – And the lock's about? too – it's too fucking big for it. Yeah. <laughs> it hangs over the edge. It's just There's called like a fucking locksmith. Dude, that, my, that was my point. The point I was trying to make to Brandon. But now we've invested so much time and energy. No, and he can't gets, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> he's so wounded and, and upset that I'm making fun of him for this. And I'm not saying that he can't do it. Eventually – it, once he brings in, I mean, I, I'm assuming that by 2 p.m., Marshall and Chris will be involved, possibly Nathan and Joel. And <laughs> if, if we throw enough rooster teeth bodies at it, eventually it's going to get installed. But the cost <laughs> savings is gone at that point. When you devote like 46 man hours of about when, seven when the people, entire company work day is stop. dedicated to well, and Jeff said, installing a lock. It's not cheaper. $50 and was a hell of a lot cheaper. You've already, you've already wasted a half an hour just sitting and watching the process and laughing at him. Oh, yeah. No, that's true, like too. That's, Jeff just killed like, my productivity. Jeff, we should have we got some beer and sat out there and watched him. <laughs> Jeff pulled up a chair and he just like sat there laughing yeah. at Brandon the whole time. I did. We, we need some lawn chairs to sit outside and look back at people in the office and laugh. <laughs> Brandon is getting so upset and so mad at me. But it's like at this point, it, we've got to at least have nine company hours inside – this one lock. Yeah. You're telling me that that's worth less than fifty dollars <laughs> at this company. Maybe. Here's well. the thing I love. You've been complaining all morning about all the work you have to do, and meanwhile, 
you were spending this entire time complaining about man hours or whatever. <laughs> I haven't complained about having work to okay, do. Okay, maybe last night. Today? So. I, I was... I don't know what you're talking about. I've also been uh, delaying the start of the podcast simply because there was drilling going on like two feet right. from, the front, uh, from my front door. Yeah, so people that are listening, you're listening to this podcast 20 minutes later than you would have gotten it today. All thanks to Brandon <laughs> not wanting to call a locksmith. Thanks, Brandon. You can send your positive <laughs> critiques to Brandon at roosterteeth.com. And oh, no. Or visit roosterteeth.com slash Brandon. Or visit roosterteeth.com slash Brandon. Hey, speaking of visiting roosterteeth.com slash Brandon um, – we're about to hit a million users on the website. How exciting is that? We're at 993,000, right? Something like that. I'm going to double check it right now. Okay, double check it. But uh, you have to vamp a bit because so, it's going to take me a second to figure it out. Allow me yeah. to vamp for a bit. 900, <laughs> yeah, 993,000. That's exciting. Let's, let's see. Let me see, if, let me see if I can get a higher it's, number. It's, it's what we call yeah. a milestone. Yeah, we'll hit, we'll hit it very soon. Hey, that is actually a milestone on our site. There's a milestone for being one of the first million people oh, on yeah. the site. So... There are seven thousand of you that can still get that milestone if you want it, and then after that you'll you're going to be relegated to the first two million, right? Yeah, because then after that there's no way you could get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Unless oh, you yeah. unless you buy an account from another user, <laughs> buy which an I, I don't recommend, <laughs> which is illegal and against terms of use. <laughs> there you oh. go. It's too bad because I have an account I could sell. No idea. <laughs> so last night uh, I don't remember where I saw this. I may have been reading Reddit or something, but I guess. There's this guy who claims to have invented the the song that da 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 charge. Is that a song? <laughs> yeah, and he's suing every professional sports organization for uh, for, uh, for for money for it. <laughs> but you get this, you're laughing. He actually copyrighted the song in 1981, and the San Diego Chargers <laughs> used to pay him for use of the song. No, it's just funny that he's targeted every single sports yeah, team. Yeah, he's uh, even if it's bullshit. At some point, I mean, if you're if you're suing 87 te- or more than that, if you're suing out 250 teams across all professional sports, somebody's going to pay. Yeah. Or someone's going to kick your ass. Someone's going to kick your ass. But <laughs> it's the MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, NCAA, and NASCAR. Do they really play that song at NASCAR? <laughs> They're like, come on, charge! He's like, yeah, I need to drive faster. Well, that, I think that's what would actually make more sense than others, don't you think? NASCAR? Yeah, I don't know. You're going fast and you no, it's like charge through the turn. <laughs> Only 480 more turns to go. <laughs> yeah, but you're still charging. I guess. You're just oh running in a God. fucking circle. Hey, speaking of driving around in a circle, uh, we got that um, that super racetrack that they're building off in East Austin. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about, Gus? Mm-hmm. That's going to have the, gra- like the a, Grand Prix or whatever. Is it F1? F1, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, it just announced that they're also going to have the motorcycle version of the Grand Prix, which is... Uh, Motor, the Moto Grand mo- Prix, Moto Prix, or whatever, <laughs> and uh, which is the only—it'll be the only track in the world that does the uh, Grand Prix championship for motorcycles and for cars. Do they have one for mopeds? No, <laughs> that would be awesome. But that actually got me thinking. Like, I think that's—I'm happy because it's going to be good for the Austin economy. It's going to bring a ton of motherfuckers into town to yeah, buy Red versus Blue DVDs. People, yeah. yeah, and because uh, by then I'll have my rooster teeth stand set up on the side of the road i'll be selling oranges and rvb dvds to anybody that gets <laughs> to the grand prix uh but uh i got me thinking i we should go gus we should go to the opening race whatever it is not that i give a fuck about Are the they expensive isn't it like a high class thing it's pretty expensive but it's supposed to uh, fuck it you know it's like a austin history kind of thing like, I, we, should, I hear, we should be there on I day hear one that there's construction problems and that there's supposed to be some bottlenecks driving to and from that track and yeah. that they estimate currently the way things are laid out that it would take you eight hours to get from that track back to downtown Holy are you serious no at, the, at the end of Seriously? a race just because of the volume of Holy cars shit. oh dude. when are they opening 2012 uh well yeah a lot of things are opening in 2012 <laughs> um <laughs> how about that uh cool uh east ave construction like hotel condo grocery store shopping area that's opening in spring of 2009 right by our L- house looking forward to that <laughs> um it's getting back to race race cars um one time my dad took me, my, my brother and I, to a race that was not too far from where we lived. And uh, he had to, like, we had to look under couch cushions to gather enough change to pay for all of us. <laughs> like, it was one of those things where we were, like, taking cans it's back to the family store. family bonding. Were they, uh, <laughs> were they even your couch cushions or were you guys, like, in the neighbor's houses? <laughs> we just dropped by and paid a visit and grabbed what we could. <laughs> they went to the furniture store and they went through the, all the couches. <laughs> Lots of couches there. <laughs> yeah, so we scraped 
together enough money and we were like buying our tickets and handing this like one penny at a time you know it took us fucking forever to get in there we get up we're in the nosebleed seats way in the back and we sit there for like four hours well, like, i don't know maybe it wasn't four hours i was a kid you know time was different but sit there for a while watching these races it was kind of boring and eventually we're like all right let's just get out of here so just as we leave and we're pulling out, we, we turn. I think it was playing on the radio or something. We turned it on and we realized that the real race hadn't started. What? It was like the warm up act or whatever. Like the B team was like getting the crowd ready and like there was nothing had happened the entire time because they were they weren't really like that daring or whatever. So and then apparently there were some amazing crashes, crashes, which is why you go to the race in the first place, right? I mean that's yeah. kind of what you're yeah. secretly hoping happens. Yeah. Can I tell you guys a little secret about <laughs> my childhood that you may not know? Sure. My stepfather was a drag racer, and I went to the drag races every weekend for four years, five years of my life. I fucking hate it. Yeah. <laughs> it was not. Yeah, you, you, you hate racing. I do. Uh, I, I, I understand now where your, your, uh, your original I hatred comes literally, from. Literally, my friends would be like, what do you want to do this weekend? You want to go play baseball? And I'd be like, no, that's cool, guys. I'm going to the Gator Nationals. I'm going to sit in a lawn chair with uh, earplugs in and try not to go deaf. You guys have a blast. Have fun with that tell baseball. Tell me how it is. Yeah, tell me. All, oh, sleepover, huh? Yeah, that's cool. I'm going to get a sunburn. <laughs> it must have been so hard to be you and watch fast cars all the time. Oh, it was so exciting. Like, who's going to get to the end of the strip faster? Oh, the guy on the left did. Yay! Fuck, the guy on the right did it last time. This is crazy. Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again. It's an eighth of a mile. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I feel about all sports, and I'm, sw- I'm the asshole. Come on. I mean, it's all pointless, right? Doing anything w- outside of your house is fucking pointless. I will say, I ate a fuckload of hot dogs over the course of those five years, and there is nothing quite like a drag race hot dog. Hey, real fast, there's a, apparently there's an update on the da-da-da-da-da charge story. <laughs> Breaking news. Okay. I, I guess um, it's been found out that someone actually composed that song in 1955 for the uh, USC. So he didn't actually compose it? That's what, and the guy who was filing the lawsuit claims he's never heard that original version. And that 19 he, when? 55. So he probably heard it once and then it stuck in his head and he's like, obviously if it's in my head, I invented it. Yeah. Dude. I'm going to sue every single person there, who's ever some, used it. There's some audio here. <laughs> there is a legal com- battle brewing. To compare the different uh, songs. Like, I'm not, I'll play it later. I'll, I'll put a link in the link dump. Do they know who invented it originally in 55? Uh, it's a USC student named Tommy Walker. Is Tommy Walker still alive? No, Tommy Walker died. Oh man! Hmm. But uh, breaking news. We'll find. We'll, we'll, we'll be following this story. Yeah, it does seem like the '80s was a little bit late for that, right? I mean, I feel like I've yeah. seen it in movies and shit. Like, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. I read that some dude uh, is going to sue every major league team because uh, he secretly invented "We Will Rock You" like <laughs> two years before Queen did. <laughs> so you can look for that one. too. Ridiculous. Um, did you see the video the other day of uh, that A380 <laughs> hitting that little plane? I saw it about 4,000 times. Dude, I just want to say, that reinforces our rant about air travel. Exactly. That's why you, follow, that's why you wear your seatbelt while you're taxiing. And you pay attention. Imagine if some asshole – imagine if you're one of your two cunts sitting in a plane, right? <laughs> and you've got your fucking camera out, your digital camera that's electronic, and you're browsing through your photos of your fucking dog or whatever it is. And all of a sudden, in the span of less than two seconds, your plane does a 90-degree turn. You don't have any teeth left because you it just ate that fucking camera. Mm-hmm. That's or, why. Or it goes – it flies out of your hand and hits a baby in the eye. And, and kills a baby yeah. or blinds a baby. You just blinded a baby because you wanted to show your friend cute pictures of your fucking shit suit. So mad. <laughs> so, ju- so let's just to reinforce. Just reinforce. wear your seatbelt till you get to the gate. Yeah, follow I, the rules. Follow the rules. Or you're that one asshole who's a business traveler who just has to get his briefcase out of the fucking top. So you stand up early, even though they tell you not to. And the next thing you know, you don't have any legs anymore. I don't, I don't know how he loses his legs. In that <laughs> I just know that he does. I, I feel like totally have, outnumbered without Bernie here. Have you seen the yet. video? No. That plane gets fucked up. The plane gets fucked up. It's just taxiing in. Just taxiing in, and then all of a sudden it gets hit by a bigger plane, and uh, I'm, I'm a, it goes like this. Wow, that was loud. Yeah. Uh, I'm amazed no one got hurt. I'm amazed I, I really no am. one got hurt. Probably because they were following the rules. Pro- probably. Well, were you, you were telling me that, that something happened with the bouncy castle. Um, oh, no, Jeff oh, said that. You were. Yeah, it was fucked up. What happened? Uh, I think it was in Arizona. I just read the other day that uh, there was, like, kids had a birthday party, and there were two kids in a bounce castle, and the wind came and picked the bouncy castle up because it wasn't properly mm-hmm. secured to the ground. And uh, it uh, took off, and it landed, like, on the interstate. With a couple of kids in it? Two kids. Oh, got, God. Kids got fucked up. I, I, I don't know how badly, but they were both – they were seriously injured. That sucks. It really sucks. 
Oh, thanks for bringing us down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't go on now. Well, that's uh, not, not a lot in the news that isn't depressing. It's true. I mean, first it was the fight song. <laughs> <laughs> In the plane. That poor guy might not get his money now. Hey, I read something on Reddit this morning that I don't know if it's true because I can't be bothered to do the research to determine it's true. So but at face value, <laughs> <laughs> according to this Reddit post today, uh, Skynet went self aware or goes self aware on uh, April 19th, 2011, which is the day that Portal 2 comes out. Uh, I'm actually, it's funny you bring that up. I was uh, doing research right now while y'all were talking trying oh, to verify yeah. that story. Apparently, in the original Terminator storyline, uh, Skynet goes online August 4th, 1997, and then gains self-awareness August 29th. They revised that in Terminator the, uh, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Oh. So that Skynet gets turned on April 19th, and then goes self-aware April 21st, mm. 2011. 2011. Shit. Interesting. Wait, the 21st? Yeah. I wonder if that's intentional or just a funny, happy accident. I'm sure. It's, it's gotta be an accident. It's gotta be an accident. Right? Yeah. Man, that means Portal 2 comes out next week. Portal 2 comes out next week. And so you'll have two days to finish it before <laughs> Aperture Science goes self-aware. That's true. <laughs> uh, and also Mortal Kombat comes out next week. Really? Yep. What came out this week? Did anything uh, come out this week? Fucking not Michael, much. The Michael Jackson Experience. The Michael right? Jackson mm. Michael Jackson the Experience and a game called Divinity 2, which I know you were all clamoring to play. What's, uh, what? Oh. Div- Divinity 2. Okay. And uh, I, I ne- think that... The, I never even heard of Divinity 1. Yeah. The big thing that came out this week, uh, there was Bulletstorm DLC that came out. It was totally unannounced, and it just came out. And then, uh, but uh, Magic of Vietnam, the DLC for Magic came out, hmm. which is very funny, I think. If you don't know what it is, Magic is like a top-down Diablo-esque like mage game where you do spell combinations in Vietnam. In well, in, in just it's just like in Wizard World, wherever the fuck that is. Wizard World. Yeah, I think it's in uh, Chicago, isn't it? <laughs> it's their Azeroth <laughs> or whatever their version of like old times where people could still do magic is. And then they just came out with a DLC where they just took the wizards and they put them in the Vietnam War, and they're fighting like the Goblin Kong. It's all very funny. I don't know. Are they, are they, are they, <laughs> kind of a really silly, <laughs> unique idea. It's like it's it's something somebody pitches as a joke, drunk at on like Friday, wear your Hawaiian shirt today, you know, it, to work today, and uh, drink at it. You know, they get like a keg for the whole company. This company's probably four people, by the way. So, <laughs> so they had to drink a lot. Three of quarters of the way into the keg, somebody goes, "People love Battlefield Bad Company Vietnam, right? Let's just make that." And then they're like, ah, "That'd be hilarious." And then Monday, somebody's already got specs drawn up, and they do it. Mm-hmm. It's uh, interesting. Yeah, and it I, seems almost like that would be something that's an unlockable or like a hidden or Easter egg in a game. I know it's crazy, right? It's, it's really, really a bizarre. I had matchup. a fuck of a time trying to play it too. Yeah, because it's a <laughs> Steam game, and but it's only Windows. And so trying to install Boot Camp was a whole day. Oh, really? Yeah, we never did it. Yeah, yeah. I, sorry about that. I was, uh, I was running around like crazy yesterday. I couldn't devote no, 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 no. all I, my time to, to looking at that problem. You're a very, very busy individual. You guys are getting down to the wire on RTX. And I would not want to be in your shoes. I understand completely. And we were able to play it on Jack's laptop, so it wasn't the end of the world. Oh, is that what you ended up doing? So, man, RTX stuff. Oh, man. We, we've essentially been – you know, we had everything pretty much organized for the event. Then we sold – Way more tickets than we wanted to. So we've essentially had to redo everything. Yeah. And actually, it's funny, too. Like, the more we nail down, the more little things pop up that we think of. So I feel like like a Hydra, almost. Like, that we're fighting this Hydra. Like, <laughs> yeah. the moment we're like, okay, we got a location. Oh, shit. We got to do this and this and this to get this location ready. Like, Can yesterday, we went to walk this um, a plot of land we're looking at, um, having a party on. Mm-hmm. And Gus stepped on a fire ant hill. That yeah. was pretty funny. I, I was I was brushing ants off of me the entire rest of the day. Like oh, I was really? sitting here like three hours later. I was like, "What the fuck? It's an ant!" Did you get bit at all? <laughs> no, I did not get bit. That's once. amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it's funny with fire ants. It's like they know. Like the moment you know that, like you aware of them, then they all bite. It seems yeah. like, or they have some kind of weird. I don't know if they have a pheromone or whatever <laughs> that they all bite at the same time. What's it your seems uh, like that happens. What's your worst fire ant story? Don't think too long. Well, I'm not from Texas, so I'm pretty new to them. So oh, I guess that's the, true. My worst story is that they, they've been You moved to Texas and they exist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I don't walk in grass anymore. Man, when I lived in Louisiana, when I lived in uh, like right outside of New Orleans, this was like seventh grade or eighth grade maybe, I was playing in the woods one day and uh, I stopped to take a piss on a tree and I was peeing on a tree and I, I felt something sharp and I looked down and my right leg was swarming with fire ants. Like I was standing right in the middle of a giant fire ant pile. And I was still peeing, so the only thing I could do was piss on the ants. So I just peed on my <laughs> so, leg and my shoe. My shoe was covered in dead ants, like 
fucking drowned yeah. fire ants and pissed. And that's when they got pissed off. And that's when they got mad. <laughs> yeah, and I got bit like a jackass, and then I had to run home with like with pee sloshing all over my flesh. It was terrible. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of peeing on myself stories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of. I'm glad you grew out of that before you met me. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's something you just do in private now. There was a a few years ago when you know when Hurricane Rita was coming and hit Houston. I you know a lot of people evacuated from Houston because it was right after Katrina and everyone mm-hmm. was you know real scared of hurricanes. And it took people hours, if not like to get from Houston to Austin. I, I heard that people would, would spend like a day or two, which normally it's a two and a half hour drive. Well, wasn't one of the problems too is people would run out of gas and right. just be stuck there because they were stuck. There was so much traffic, and I heard stories of people who were like stuck in their cars, you know, not moving, and they would just pee in their shoes, you know, and like pour it out into the into the street because they had no other way to go. Uh, there's other ways to go. Yeah, there's got to be something other than your shoe, right? Or just just just, well, just get out of your car and go piss on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah I, guess. I guess people don't like to, but I think that's way more, more hum- less humiliating to just go and pee in front of yeah, people than also, to pee in your shoe. It was also it super out. crowded. He couldn't. He wasn't moving because there were so many people. Oh, it was like a ton of people staring at you pissing on the side of the road. Dude. Versus pissing in your shoe in private and then just but, pouring it out. You know, you're always assuming too that people want to like they're going to be looking. They're like, like, oh, I got to watch this person pee. And, like, also, it, like, when you're would... bored and you spent 24 hours staring <laughs> at nothing, if there's a dude pissing, you're going to watch him. Yeah, it's yeah. like the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a vendor selling fucking bum cakes and popcorn. <laughs> Man, what kind of shoe? I wonder. Uh, uh, it was a hush puppy. <laughs> oh yeah, who cares? I'm pissing, I'm pissing a hush puppy. Do you still make those? I don't know. <laughs> And, you know, you can make a fortune if you had a, happen to have a rubber boot. Just rent, <laughs> rent, rent out your boot. You can rent your boot. <laughs> God. Piss boot. <laughs> Five dollars. I will dispose of the urine. Oh, God. Yeah, I guess if you have to do delivery, you should charge extra. It's, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a disposal fee. <laughs> which we've learned about in uh, trying to arrange porta potties for RTX. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's got a fee. Yeah, what's the dad? You guys got some porta potties worked out? Yeah, yeah porta potties the easy part. We, we sprung extra. For the waterless hand sanitizing stations. Nice. So you fuckers better use it. So you guys better have fucking clean hands. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We, we paid extra for that. We, it's, cla- it's a classy affair. <laughs> oh, God. I, I'm sure at this point everyone's like, why the fuck did we pay to go to this I event? Know, We're going like, to be out in a field ants. with porta potties <laughs> and fire ants using waterless <laughs> hand sanitizer? Don't even get me started on the poison ivy. Yeah, just so you know, the, the waterless hand sanitizer is also your shower. <laughs> 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 we got you guys extra. <laughs> <laughs> just rub it in your armpits every day or two. That's and okay. just for the record, this is uh, event is happening, what, May 27th? Uh, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, be out there, yeah we'll be out there the 28th and 29th. So it's going to be about 146 oh, degrees. Oh, it won't be that hot. It won't be. Don't be, don't be a downer. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just preparing people. We, we looked it up. I, I, don't I, wear I don't clothes. Remember, I don't remember now off the top of my head, but I looked up historical weather data for that weekend. Try to make sure it wasn't going to rain. And oh, be, how was it? Uh, low chance, very low chance of rain. Uh, and it'll be, it should be a pleasant temperature wise, but it's already really hot right now. Yeah, it's gonna be. I think it'll be a hot year. So, but I think we've got some, we've got some things in the works that'll help cool people down. Man, uh, phone party. Uh, <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I'm sorry. Wireless hand sanitizer party. <laughs> uh, waterless hand sanitizer. <laughs> no, wireless hand it's sanitizer. Actually, it's also wireless. Why would you do? You want wires <laughs> there? <laughs> Come on, don't be an asshole. <laughs> I was <laughs> oh, speaking of wires. We need to get that low hanging wire removed from the lot. Oh yeah, and there's also like <laughs> the, one, the, the sparking a, a one. power line has like five feet off the ground. <laughs> you almost hit your head on when you're walking around. <laughs> oh, oh man, good times. We lost a chicken yesterday. Fuck! Did you hear about the chicken, dude? That sucks. We lost yeah, which, which, which one was it? We lost Lala. Lala. I, I don't know who that is. She's, she's a silky. She's silky, and she kind of kept to herself. Uh, she went broody pretty early, I, so I, she I, was. The one that keeps to itself. I know that exactly the one yeah, you're talking the about. The black one that was like always in the house. Mm-hmm. She, uh, because the other ones we left the, we forgot to put them back in their coop one night, and they all, except for her, they all like to sleep in the tree. So they all flip into the tree. She was the one that stayed in the house, mm-hmm. and there's a whole pile of feathers like from the door. Like the possum went in and got her, oh. and I guess didn't know to look for the chickens in the tree, and I've, it didn't even fucking eat all of her. I've <laughs> run the possum off a couple times. The uh, and the, now I'm gonna kill it. The funny thing is, I know that chicken because when I was watching your chickens, I remember I told you they all escaped on me. That's the one that didn't leave. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the one she that was stayed pretty in the house. Steady. But that's the and that's the thing. And at night, chickens almost go into this sort of semi comatose state where they don't even if they're awake, like you can pick them up and move them around, like mm-hmm. they don't fight back. So, not a good time to leave your coop door open. Man, so I had to fucking bury her last night. It was really sad for me, not for Millie. Millie's like, "Wow, the chicken's really dead. Can I touch it?" I'm like, "No, it's gross. Don't touch it." Kids are so weird about death. Kids, you know, I think they just don't get the significance of it. I know. And she's like, "Why did she die?" And I'm like, "Well, a possum ate her." And she's like, "Why did the possum eat her?" And I'm like, "Well, we left the gate, the door open." And and she's like, "So it's your fault?" And I'm like, "I, 
Yeah, and then the like, Griffin comes home because she was at the grocery store or whatever, and she's like, Mommy, guess what? The chicken died because Daddy wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she, was she she's like, when's the, chicken, when's the chicken going to respawn? <laughs> it's sad. Yeah, and actually, that, I had bonded that, with that chicken less than the other chicken, so it's, it's really sad, but I'm, I'm glad that it wasn't one of my favorites. I am going to kill a fucking possum. Can you eat possum? Do you know? Isn't there like a possum recipe in the joy of cooking? If you're from West Virginia or Kentucky, yeah. you can. No offense. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I wouldn't recommend eating a wild possum. They probably have worms. Yeah, but how and shit. wild can it be if it's like walking around like East Sixth or East whatever street we live on? East whatever street. Yeah. Now people are gonna look up East whatever street and they're gonna know exactly where we live. <laughs> They'll just look for the uh, the Google image of my wife. Millie, Millie, Millie was like, <laughs> "Are you really gonna the, kill the did possum?" Did she actually end up in the photo? Uh, they haven't updated it yet. Oh, I want to see. Millie was like, are you really going to kill the possum, Dad? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to murder the possum. And she's like, why are you going to do that? And I was like, well, it's retribution. This is it, I don't want it to kill any other of our chickens, and I don't know how to keep it away. She's like, how are you going to kill it? And I was like, I'm going to bash its chi- I'm gonna bash its possum brains in with a baseball bat. And she's like, cool. Because <laughs> I'm a little worried does, does about it. Does she want to help? Kid. Yeah, maybe yeah. we should get her, like, let, involve her less in this whole or process. Just start therapy now. Of course, kids, like, out on the farm learn, learn how to kill, like, pests, right? Yeah, yeah, things were things were better in the past, right? That's what everyone always says. So, <laughs> so there must there must be there must be something to that. Yeah, good point. Well, that sucks that you lost your chicken. Yeah, I'm pretty sad. We're from, from seven to five. And really the chicken, fast. our other chickens are really upset about it, and they they, they are they're they acting will, different. They are acting very different. It was like I had to put them up last night, and it they, it was like a twenty minute yeah, affair. Yeah, they're like, don't they put cr- us in the death box, please. <laughs> could not, yeah, we could smell the death. They were terrified. It was really sad. The thing that pisses me off, and this pisses me off for everything, like when we've gardened and had mm. squirrels steal like vegetables or whatever, like it's the fact that the animals, they, they, take, they take like one bite and they're like, eh, I'm not into it. And they leave. And it's like, you just ate one bite out of my tomato that I've been waiting for for two weeks. Or like, not even you that. You killed my chicken and wandered off and didn't eat it. And you, know? you like lost interest 30 seconds into the feeding. Yeah. No, the, the, the worst thing about those squirrels is they'll go in and you'll have like squash, right, Gus? Let's mm-hmm. say squash. I and hate you'll squash. have or melons that take forever. 20 squash. Right, and you're like, wow, I'm about to have a squash harvest. In like two days, I'm gonna have a squash harvest, and uh, and then uh, a fucking squirrel will come in and take a bite out of a squash and go, that's terrible. I wonder what the next one tastes like. <laughs> that's terrible. Only 18 more to go, and they'll they'll just take one bite out of every single, yeah, so you get so nothing. Annoying. I, hey, I hate to interrupt your your squash farm story <laughs> over there. It's, we sound like hillbillies. But uh, I'm going to kill a possum. Like, Let's go see a drag race. And uh, <laughs> squash. they killed our squash harvest. I, I, I just saw on uh, Halo Waypoint. Apparently, uh, BS Angel said that uh, I guess they're going to be doing something at PAX Prime this year. Oh yeah, what's the, what's the? It doesn't say. It's very cryptic, very uh, open ended. It just says weird. It just says save the date. Hmm. And this says PAX Prime, Save August 26th, 27th, and 28th. Not that I have to tell anyone listening to this podcast what PAX is. Or to save the day. Or to go to PAX, because I'm sure all of you already go anyway. Absolutely. So, I wonder what's going on. That's Maybe cool. somebody's getting married. <laughs> Maybe somebody's getting married. <laughs> Maybe. When Master is, when Chief is, and Cortana are going to finally tie the knot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why, 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 why won't they just do it? <laughs> it's like moonlighting. <laughs> moonlighting. So, that's, that's, a reference reference. Steel. that's a reference no one's going to get who's listening <laughs> to this podcast. I'm going to get an email from, like, one other dude. For people who were born after 1990, uh, Moonlighting was a very popular television show with Sybil Shepard and Bruce, and who? Bruce Willis. <laughs> Sybil Shepard? I mean, like, even that's, like, uh, you're talking about someone that they're not going to still She was a know famous was. actress in the 70s and the 80s. She was the poor man's Kathleen Turner. It's like your, the history lesson about yeah. by Jeff Ramsey. And they, was all, they, were, they flirted <laughs> with each other. It was a private detective agency where she owned it and he worked for her and they solved crimes and mysteries and they had this great chemistry and they were always about to start dating, kind of like Jim and Pam on The Office, but they never <laughs> quite did. And then just when you thought they were going to, Mark Harmon, who was famous for Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, right? Came, or no, the Ted Bundy story, uh, came in and uh, stole her away. And there was never any kind of closure. Can it was I, very is, sad. Is is this the way we're going to stay in the top twenty five by making synapses <laughs> oh, of like? Oh, I got another one. <laughs> the and there was a nerdy lady who worked with them named Miss DePesto, and uh, the guy that played Booger in Revenge of the Nerds, he worked for them as well, and they had a uh, they had a romance that actually did bud. The was Miss DePesto really? Annie Potts? No, or am I thinking of the character? She from looked like she looked like she was like. Their version of Annie Potts in Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Was she as hot as Annie? Oh, no. I guess no. from the Ghostbusters now. Of course, Ghostbusters 2, I thought she was pretty hot. And her, what was her name in Ghostbusters? Uh, Janine. Janine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's, uh, Alice Beasley was Agnes DePesto. Yeah, Agnes DePesto. 
Okay, let's get let's get <laughs> the out of the 80s, please, with the Ghostbusters and the Moonlighting talk, and let's come back to current times. Well, all right. <laughs> and go. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> man, the other day I sent Bernie this video. It was uh, one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. It was uh, a video that talks about, I guess, the dangers of high pressure in under when you're diving underwater. And it talks about like the pre- the pressure differentials between bodies of water and how they can crush and kill people mm-hmm. without them knowing what's going on. And it has like three D recreations of uh, commercial diving accidents where people Holy get uh, killed. It's awful. One of them was awful because it was like some dude just repairing the bottom of a swimming pool uh, in scuba gear, and uh, he got sucked to a drain and got stuck. And it wasn't enough pressure to kill him, but he couldn't move, and he ran out of air and died. Oh, my God. The that's, bottom of a swimming pool. That has to be the worst. I mean, there are, I'm sure, worse ways to go, but that's bad. Yeah. Just, like, sitting there waiting. Nah, that sucks, man. I mean, now I, now I brought everyone down. What a fucking happy podcast this has been. You're getting a massage today. Hey, let me ask you a question about that. All right. <clears throat> I think that I think you're setting me up. This is some sort of a test. Or you're trying to give Did me I, like every everything is a test. It's a, it's either a test. I don't know how this is going to go. It's either a test or you're giving me like the best present ever. I'm not sure because we read on Reddit like a couple weeks ago or some article somewhere that said that 30 percent of all uh, back rubs, Swedish massages, end in happy endings. And then you were like, "You're never getting another massage again as long as I live." There's no way. Mm-hmm. You're certainly not going to get four because then i know you're definitely getting a, a hand job and uh, it's point. math yeah it's just math <laughs> and then like two weeks later she's like hey i scheduled you a massage it's tonight at six fifteen. so are you do you want me to get a happy ending or no, are you well, trying to get divorced well, i know that this uh massage therapist is a friend of ours so i'm I, that's even more confusing to me no because i know that i that she's not gonna mess with you plus i know you and i know like you're closing maneuvers or whatever <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, closing never, maneuvers. you're never gonna you're never gonna have the balls to ask and i think that it's one of those things that I don't know. Hopefully, well, maybe he read that article on Reddit a few weeks ago about how to uh, how to no, ask your massage therapist if they do happy endings. Now I'm terrified because, like, what if I go and I get this nice massage and it's going well, and then she's like, "All right, are you ready for your, you know what?" And I'm like, Flip "Excuse over. me," and then she's like, "It's okay with Griffin." Will it be okay with you? Is I this a thing? I'm so scared. Know. I don't even think you should. She's be a friend. Should this. I trust her? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to. If you don't know, why then... did you do this to me? <laughs> Well, you got to go for it. Why now. did you put me in this in this position? <laughs> not only are you, not, are you not allowed to have a massage from now on, you're not allowed to leave the house or get out of my sight if you're even <laughs> asking me these questions. I t- I just wanna, I'm trying to save my marriage here. God. Inquiring minds want to know. I don't know why you're doing I this to that me. I think that's bullshit. There's no way that, that that many massages end in happy endings. And there's no way that that many people If, feel if that's like- true, I'm not shaking a massage therapist's hand ever again. <laughs> no kidding. I'm certainly not kissing her hand. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows where they've been. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't see the point. Like, I don't think you would get paid enough. You don't enough. see the point? Oh, from, from the, the giving perspective. Yeah, like, because you could, if you want to prostitute yourself, you can make way more money just being a prostitute than being a massage therapist get, who gives hand jobs. Isn't that safer, though? Like, not being out on the street? I hear the not average, going weird places? I hear the average tip for a hand job is, uh, after a massage is $50. That's on top of, like, a $100 massage. That's good Is that money. the average tip, $50, $50 for a hand job? Yeah. That's not much. You seem to know a lot about this. Uh, well, I mean, I read the article. Mm. And I, you know, you I researched it's... it and I <laughs> 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 sent some inquiring emails. And <laughs> every night after Griffin went to sleep, I whispered in her ear, get Jeff on massage. <laughs> Took about two weeks. <laughs> You're really talking me out of this. No, I'm kidding. Sort of. No, I'm nervous though. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I probably should have picked a less hot massage therapist. You know I just realized? Griffin you should, you should terrible. film it. Oh, and, and our massage therapist is super hot too yeah. um you know what i just realized i'm looking at naked gus drinking uh on our chair and playing with the xbox controller the cardboard cutout mm-hmm. the cardboard cutout that's the chair we just put in millie's bedroom oh well you you sprayed it down with bleach though right i did i did if you look closely i'm sitting on a napkin so oh, it's okay. totally sanitary right. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny little napkin. that napkin is a barrier from my ass to <laughs> wait a minute is that the napkin we just put in millie's room <laughs> <laughs> god Man, when I had, I, I really wanted to to do something again in your house when you had me watch your chickens and you gave me the keys and the alarm code, but I just for some reason I didn't have the energy that week. Oh, like, no, I, I, I couldn't you, bring man. myself to do it. Our friend Lauren was in town visiting us for a week recently, and um, a friend from Oregon, and she came in like she came to the office one day because it was a Friday and it was pretty relaxed. Mm-hmm. We were doing a barbecue, and I was I mentioned I was like, okay, so Gus is you know you remember Gus, and she was like, is he the one that had all the pictures of himself all around his <laughs> office? And I'm like, yeah, she's like the naked pictures of himself in his office. I'm like, yeah, no, that's him. She's like, 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that stood out in her mind when she met you. I think it's the thing that sticks out in most people's mind when they come in here if they're not familiar with us. I like I like when people that aren't familiar with Rooster Teeth come to the office because they're always like, "What do you do? You ever stop and listen to the conversation you're having?" And I'm like, "I have no idea what you're talking about. I guess we talk about weird things a lot." Or yeah, we have like tons of naked pictures of each other around. Or it must it must be a surreal experience. So speaking of which, I got something to say. Okay, I uh, I had my first. You know we have we have uh, a receptionist now. She just started the other day, uh, last Friday. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she's great. I had my first negative experience about having a receptionist here, though. I guess because she's so new, I'm still not used to having her around. And the other day, I had to take my clothes off for a short, <laughs> which isn't out yet. Big surprise. And I had to close the door to my office because I felt uncomfortable about it. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever had to do that. So, you shouldn't you even you should be doing that anyway. Nah, I don't give a fuck. No, well, yeah, well, we give a, we, the rest of us give a. If fuck. you don't like it, don't come and look. <laughs> hey, I mean, hey, don't pigeonhole me in with your anti naked gust rhetoric. I'm totally fine. I get naked you. right now. Yeah, so, I got no I, problem, so buddy. I, I hope to 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 connect and cross that bridge so that I can I can I don't have to close my door anymore. Okay. Why don't you just take off your clothes right after the podcast, walk outside, and say, "Hey, I just want to get this out of the way." <laughs> All right, we're good. And then just go back to work. <laughs> Maybe I should. You said Jeff that you're nervous because you listen to Howard Stern so much and, and read some uh, websites that. Well, I'm always there's always might be like to women. Yeah, well, I'm always looking at like celebrity gossip or whatever. So there's always like Howard Stern blaring and then titties everywhere, and that just and she sits right outside my door. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have to come to terms with that. I think. At some because I'm not gonna or stop face an awful lawsuit listening to Howard Stern. You know, I have noticed that everyone just changes wherever. Like they don't go to. The, we have several bath, like about three bathrooms, and we have everyone, like a lot of people have their own office. And everyone changes like at my workbench. Like they just come <laughs> over and they decide to take their pants off right next to my bench because. Well, you do have all those pictures of half naked people around <laughs> yes, here. Maybe, so- maybe you're sending mixed signals. How about that? No, I'm not. I'm 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 sending the muscle signal. I'm saying like <laughs> this is the kind of guy I want to look at naked. <laughs> well, we're doing our best to emulate that, but obviously it's not working. <laughs> What is with the – we have workout equipment in the staging area. What's with that? We're working out. We're working out? Who's, yeah. Who's working out? I, no, I, 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 it's been sitting there by itself lonely in the corner. I just wonder why somebody brought I it I think the only workout that has uh, happened on or around that machine was the two hours it took Bernie and Jack to put it together. <laughs> they were they were definitely grunting and sweating by the end, and, <laughs> and then, so they got their one workout from it, and <laughs> now it will sit there until we throw it away in six months. So, I mean, that reminds me, we, we saw that article the other day that said that if you sit most of the day, it increases your chance of getting a heart attack like 54%. Excuse me? Oh, did you not see that? Is no. It because you're, is it because of the circulation? Or? It might be like activity. Oh, my God. Uh, but I guess if you have a job where you sit down like the majority of the day or you spend most of your day sitting down, it increases your chance of getting a heart attack. Like 50, it was either 54 57%. Oh, God. So um, yeah. I think I'm going to get a desk like Bernie <laughs> where you can stand and work. No they kidding. also say that 30% of all massages end in hand jobs. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about these statistics. Speaking of hand jobs, of I'm getting a massage tonight. I'm really, I'm really nervous about. <laughs> you keep talking about this massage. Where's this massage going to happen? It's right down the road too. Like in a so you have, you, you're going somewhere. It's not at your house. I'm going to someone's house. Oh, you're going to someone's house. Probably in their bedroom. Um, she actually has like a. It's not her bedroom, but it's like an extra room that she uses for like. It's a, is it her fuck room? No, uh, well, I. Are there pillows everywhere? I went actually with. I did a session with her, and, and there was no. There was no happy ending. So, mm. and there wasn't any incense either. Was there an okay ending? <laughs> we'll, we'll settle for a mediocre ending. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, our standards are very low. You'll, you'll, you'll find. Oh, man. So do you, do you have um, a flip camera? I do. You do? Yeah, I have a flip HD. Yeah, I read yesterday, I guess, that uh, I guess Cisco, uh, Cisco, I learned that Cisco owns Flip and that yeah. they're, dis- they're discontinuing the, uh, the Flip camera. They bought Flip not too long ago, right? Yeah, I think it was you for know, like $590 million or that's something. That's really fucking sad too because I read not a year ago, I read that Flip had 40% of the market. I want to say also that we fucking called it. Yeah, we did when, call it. When the iPhone 4 was announced and we said, said it was they a had flip an killer. HD camera, we said that's it. it was, that's it for the Flip. It look, took less than a year. took less than a year to kill a product that had 40 fucking percent of the market. Mm-hmm. That's they, crazy. They said that the, the it was still selling well. They just didn't see any growth on it, that smartphones were going to eat into the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that people weren't going to you know, carry, want to carry another thing that just did one thing. And I, it makes sense. It is true. People, like, p- 
like even today, like we're trying to Gus has is the last person. Well, he and Nathan are pretty much the last people to do anything with their office. Like even Joel has like done a little bit with his. Um, so Gus, you wants mean as far as like decorating, decorating and stuff? or whatever, yeah, okay. you know, like and and Gus has so far hasn't really because the drunk tank is is in here and and other factors like he hasn't wanted to fill up his space yet. Well, he's filled it up with naked photos of himself. Right. So that's the, the one push that he's yeah, that's he's, decoration, isn't it? <laughs> but even today, like he was like, well, I don't really just want to get a desk. I want a desk that does other things. Like I want a desk from the future. Yeah, here's, what, here's what I was saying. <laughs> I, I know it's going to sound terrible and douchey and awful, but I was like. The way it works right now, a desk is something you put technology on or you put technology under. Like, I want a desk that is technology. I want a desk that has, like, USB ports that connect to my computer or that has, like, a screen, like, a touch screen built into it or, like, an iPhone dock, like, right on it or built into it or I'm, speakers inside of it. I'm going to tell you something right now. If you start a cult, I will join your cult. <laughs> I like what you're saying. Yeah, it should be integrated to everything. Like, if like the desk is essentially the same shit it's been for 300 years. It's a piece of wood or metal with some fucking wood or metal legs. That's it. Why, why is there no advance in the desk technology? I have, I've now. never been so disappointed in an, pri- an item as I am right now. I am furious about that. No one thinks about it, right? You're right. It's awful. You're right. Like, why, why can't you have a USB extension, or like USB wires running through your desk so that you plug it into your, your computer and then you're like, all your USB ports are right here on your desk where you just like, boop, boop, boop. There might be. Have you even done any research? There might I've be looked something. and I found one. I think it was called the Milk Desk. Oh, the Milk Desk, yeah. But it was like $5,000. It's also in Denmark, I think. I found a place in Beverly Hills that would sell it. Oh, well, of course. I wonder how it would be to recreate. I don't know. I guess we could make it. Hopefully, Steve Jobs is listening to this. Right. I, I, want- I, I don't know. I, everyone says like, I guess we can make it, but but like Brandon said that earlier with the door handle, we needed help drilling. Yeah, we like- can't. <laughs> the fifteen of us can't put a fucking lock on a on a door <laughs> in less than six hours. So I don't think we're going to be making anything. Well, we just, we just won't put Brandon on that project. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, the milk desk was cool, and I really liked it until I saw the price. Yeah, I think it's you, really expensive. Was it, was it the milk desk? There was one of those desks, I, I, I looked for some, that where you could put a fish tank into the desk. Yes, that's the, the milk, milk desk. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I remember we discovered the milk desk. Uh, I think I found it on a design blog. It was like four or five years ago. It was when we were moving into the downtown office, we first mm-hmm. discovered it. Yeah, but it's way too expensive. Yeah, there's no way I'm And I think that. it's gotten more expensive. Yeah, I want a technology desk that's cheap. <laughs> Where's that? I, I want the Dell version of that desk. <laughs> I want to go to Office Max and pay like 100 bucks for it. <laughs> oh, man. So I, 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 I get the feeling I'm just going to end up with uh, a standard cheap desk. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it, buddy. Yeah, we'll your, your desk right now seems okay. I wonder if I could turn that TV into a desk. <laughs> The yeah, Microsoft Surface. <laughs> It'd be awesome. Maybe you could get a, a bunch of iPads and layer them. That'd be fucking that, expensive. Yeah, yeah, that would be cheaper than just buying a... So is it M-I-L-K? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That seems like a... I don't know. That seems, it seems like an odd name for something centered around technology. It probably and... means techno desk in Denmarkian. Denmarkian. Oh. Denmarkish. <laughs> Denmarkish. What? What are you looking at? Nothing. All right. All right. We'll we'll do some more desk research yeah, later. We we'll try to find something. If anybody has any uh, awesome technological desks, please send us an email to Brandon at roosterteeth.com. <laughs> or roosterteeth.com slash Brandon. Or roosterteeth.com slash Brandon. We, should, we, we should would start, love to hear of it. We should start working that in more often into the podcast. Roosterteeth.com slash Brandon. Yeah. And Brandon at roosterteeth.com. Also, B-R-A-N-D-O-N. After you sign up for our site and try to get in before the million and get your uh, million milestone, you fucking what? telephone... Fax machine. Wow. Fax machine. Did we just go back in time? Is it 1997? <laughs> uh, what were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to say that people uh, should stop by and say hi to Brandon at roosterteeth.com slash Brandon. <laughs> should be the first thing you do after you sign up for the site. That's a great idea. That's where all the, the best news is at roosterteeth.com slash Brandon. That's right. Is he going to murder us one day? He's going to murder somebody. <laughs> um, I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's, uh, well, it's probably going to be either you or I. <laughs> or Jack. He hates Jack. That's true. This guy, this guys are, those guys are awesome. Uh, Brandon's, Brandon's taking some time off, though. Is he? I think uh, after today, he's gonna be out for a few days. Oh, really? Yeah. Like a sanity vacation? I or? hope so. Yeah, I hope so. That guy's, that guy's always here. As much yeah. shit as we give him. No, it's I true. I came by over the weekend to drop some stuff off that I had to buy from Home Depot, and he was here. Like he showed up just as I showed up, and yeah. he was just doing. He wasn't being here all day, but he does seem to be here all the time. Mm-hmm. Brandon's a new Bernie. He's always at the office. Okay, enough, enough, enough ass kissing on Brandon. Yeah. So, a couple weeks ago, I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast yet. Uh, when we did the video podcast, the the, uh, the most recent one that you guys weren't in, 
I, I watched it. I talked about making the app where you can take people's pictures and it tells you if they're single or yeah, 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 profile yeah. and stuff. The next fucking day, Google announced they're, they're making that app. Wow, just based on what they heard from you? I, I, I started it. <laughs> the sons of bitches. Da, 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 I think, I think they're, charge. <laughs> <laughs> they're calling it Google Faces or Google Face. And it was going to be called Gus Face. Yeah. God damn it. So I have precedent. We fucking Whoa. release a podcast a day early, so I'm going to wait 15, 20 years. Lawsuit. Do you think, yeah. maybe, do you think maybe there'll be a reboot of Moonlighting now? I hope so. <laughs> People will get reminiscent for it suddenly. That would be awesome. For some strange reason. Uh, we're, we're, we're tomorrow they'll announce the Moonlighting reboot coming this fall on NBC. Oh, man. You know what? I saw that there's a, I, there, there's a remake right now that makes no sense to me. They're remaking Fright Night. Do you remember that Fright movie? Fright Night, yeah, man. Why, why, that was not a good movie when it came out. Why would – like who is clamoring for the f- Fright I mean, Night remake? Come on. They're also Just re- make another fucking vampire movie. They're also remaking uh, the Wonder Woman TV series. And Charlie's oh, Angels I TV series that. now. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, that seems – But her costume – and I, that's a problem with some of those like vintage superheroes. You can't fuck with the costume too much, but there's, the costumes they're are kind of lame. Yeah. Like what we were – we were watching the they, trailer for what, was it Captain, Mer- Captain yeah. America? Yeah. America? It's like there's only so far – because you can't break entirely away. I actually thought that Captain America trailer was pretty good except – and Matt pointed this out. The scene where he busts in through the door with a pistol and it looks like a water gun in his hand and it's like pew, pew, pew. doesn't fit with the whole Captain America persona. No. He's holding this like tiny little baby pistol. I didn't notice that. Could you? I'll have to rewatch it. That's when he's got the shield, right? Uh, he does have a shield. Does anybody else think that the chick in the Wonder Woman costume looks like she has a dick? <laughs> <laughs> she's got like it's not her fault I, know, I mean maybe it is I don't know but she's it's, it's not a flattering costume in the in the crotch area she gives her a package maybe she's got a really huge clip maybe she does <laughs> are you ever thinking about that, you know, I, if think you, about that. I don't know if I, I think I may have mentioned this on the podcast before some, for some reason <laughs> but if you take if, as a woman if you take testosterone like get the injections you your clip gets bigger I did not know that. Just so you, you know. Have never, you have never mentioned that no? no I guess I must have been thinking it a lot <laughs> <laughs> does it get better? No, I don't. I don't know because it's still not like like if you go from female to male, it doesn't ever work. You don't get like erections. Of course, I'm sure that there's still blood flow and there might be a semi. I don't know, but is this too? No, go go. Like you need to do some take, <laughs> some research. And I think that like so then you have the clit, but then they don't they take the the labia and make it into the balls. I Am I wrong? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. No, should we find some pictures and see what's up? There was a there was a. God, I keep talking about Reddit this podcast, but there was a, a thread on Reddit where a urologist did one of those Ask Me Anything threads, and uh, people were asking him about gender reassignment. And he said, you know, and, and they asked, like, which was easier, going from man to a woman or woman to man? And he said, uh, it's easier to dig a hole than build a pole. <laughs> then, yeah. then in parentheses, he said, this kills at urologist conferences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they do say it is easier, right, to go from. Because, yeah. you know, in implants, too, it's like easier than doing like a full mastectomy. How the fuck do we end up on gender reassignment? Because <laughs> Griffin's in the room. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we we definitely run the gamut here. I I, want, I wish we could reassign our podcast weekly on iTunes into whatever category it belongs, <laughs> or like as you're listening to it, it moves around to different categories. Yeah, because we really haven't talked too much about games. I don't think. No, this is this is well, we talked about Magic of Vietnam and Por- of a, Portal and Mortal Kombat coming out. This week is a little bit dry, though, right? Yeah, it's this week reminds me a lot of what it's like to live at home with Griffin. Like I have lots of stimulating conversations like Griffin telling me, I don't have any crystals and I need a good place to find crystals. Can you help me? There's a crystal place by our house. Crystals. I when did I say that? You're making me sound like a crazy person. You said it the other day. (laughs) You're like, I need some healing crystals. Oh no, not crystals. I was just just want to check out their stones because I wanted some petrified wood. (laughs) The opposite of a crystal. Oh my god. So you can't supply your wife with the petrified wood anymore, huh? No. <laughs> How long you guys been married? Oh, Six years. The magic's over. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. She's having to shop around. Well, luckily you're getting a massage tonight. Maybe that'll uh, that'll start things. Oh, spice up. Get things going. I'm, I'm I'm seriously regretting getting the massage. I'm regretting this getting like, the massage because I'm so <laughs> terrified of what's going to happen. How long of a massage is this going to be? Uh, I think it'll probably be an hour. Isn't that typical? How much does a massage cost? An hour long massage. It varies, but I think like seventy five eighty for an hour, depending. And I and she's a friend, so she usually mm-hmm. gives us a deal or whatever. So, so seventy five eighty is a normal price. Usually, think, I've never yeah. had a massage. It depends on the massage therapist. What kind of massage is this? Is it like a, a Swedish deep tissue or something? I think it depends on Jeff, but I would think Swedish with maybe some acupressure. In the okay, I, where what region? Do you really want acupressure? Acupressure hurts a little bit. <laughs> I've seen videos on the internet. Dudes getting punched in the balls. Yeah. Some guys are into that. I'm not who's to judge. 
Schmo videos. If you want someone to punch you in the balls, that's right. We talked about that. If you want someone to punch you in the balls, I can do that for you. (laughs) Will you charge me? That job's taken. Oh man. I thought we wrote it into our vows. Hey, you're right though. We've been a little light on pop culture. Have you seen any good movies? No. Um. No. No. I can't think. Uh, what's the last movie I saw? I saw Black Swan not too long ago. No. What did you think of it? I liked it. I thought it was really good. Is it worth watching? Should I see it? Oh, have you not seen it? No, I haven't mm. seen it. It's really good. Okay. Um, I liked it a lot. I think my wife didn't like it so much. She thought it was okay. Um, I thought it was a really great What's her fucking deal? I know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll check that out. It'll, uh, it's the last pre-pregnancy movie we get to see from her, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, no, Your Highness. Oh, Your Highness. Because Your Highness opens this weekend, right? I, is, it already came out. Oh, it did? Yeah, I think it already oh. came out. Man, I heard an awful interview with uh, Danny McBride on uh, on Satellite Radio the other day. I was listening to Shade 45, you know, the hip-hop station. Uh-huh. And Danny McBride was on uh, Plugging Your Highness. And, like, one of the dudes just kept saying, oh, 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 insult that guy. Insult him. You know, just say something funny. And Danny oh, McBride was like, oh, God. hey, how's it going? You know, just so awful. They're, like, constantly oh. asking him to do that. That's terrible. Dude, that is the fucking worst. Yeah, at one point he did literally said, say something funny. We have, or insult him. Was like, oh, man, come on. You and I have had to do a couple of interviews, and I don't want to get too specific, where we they kind of went that route. And that's like, that is so terrible. It, They're like, man, Red vs. Blue is really funny. Be funny right now. Like, <laughs> what, what, what do you want to be funny about? I don't know. Talk about that guy. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> or they'll be like, hey, why don't you do, all right, for the, just do a bit. Uh, we're going to interview, but we're going we're gonna to interview as Griffin Simmons. Go. Like, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm lazy. Where's Bernie? Is the script done yet? Yeah. <laughs> hey, check it out. I don't want to do this interview because I'm so lazy. I'm going to go eat an Oreo. All right. And then they're all like, really? That's it. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, of uh, people were disappointed in the Charlie Sheen live show. It's like, oh, right. The dude's an actor. He's not a writer, you know? I don't know what you expect from him. Well, you're the Did dumb you... shit that paid 100 bucks or whatever to go Are see it. Are there videos of that up? Because I, I was reading a little bit about it, and they had this... I, I was it on... What would Tyler do? Like, what was it? The one website of the gossip sites? Yeah, yeah, one of the gossip sites. And they had a horrible photo of him. It looked like he was missing a tooth. Is that the one? Probably. Oh, probably. He, he's done a few shows. I just read the one in New York did not go well. Yeah. he. he uh, you know, he, I don't think he has any teeth, actually. No, it, he has falsies, yeah. Oh, he, really? He's got gold teeth, I think. Yeah, and he and puts like porcelain caps veneers over, over, it, yeah. over it whenever he needs to like appear in public. Yeah, apparently the uh, the crack took took care of his teeth. I didn't know that crack is bad for teeth. I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. He's uh, he's an actor. He's only funny because someone writes and tells yeah, him what to do. What, what do they call it? Torpedo of Truth tour? Something like <laughs> that. Being great as that. Uh-huh. But that's the thing, too. It's like I think that a lot of people tend to forget when they're enjoying some kind of entertainment just how many people are involved in making something good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the actor and then the directors, they get all the credit, you know, because they're the ones that are the most visible. But it's, w- it's easy to forget. I wonder if it sucks to be like a Charlie Sheen and – because I, I – Chris, you say stand-up comedians. Like, you always think about who the funniest people are, like a Chris Rock or a whoever, Jerry Seinfeld. And uh, and they're – you see them on television shows and they're very conversationally funny. And then you have like a, a comedic actor like Tom Hanks or – I feel weird lumping these two together – or Charlie Sheen uh, who make a living being funny on film or on television. Charlie Sheen's in the number one – comedy on television mm-hmm. has been for like nine years you have to wake up every day and think obviously i'm a funny guy right yeah mm-hmm. fucking 12 million people a week laugh at me or laugh with me i got i've got to be a funny guy or you're like tom hanks you're like i made bachelor party and the burbs and all of these great fucking money pit all these great comedies i must be a funny guy and then like you and i saw that was awful. you and i saw tom hanks on uh jimmy kimmel I yeah. think the other night yeah and he was trying to be like funny and jokey and it was fucking terrible really tom hanks, it, tom hanks is normally pretty he's funny and normally, good off the cuff. normally kind of funny and off the cuff i thought so too it's, it almost it seemed like he was enjoying himself more than anyone else. It, it, it's, it was really actually kind of douchey well, and i think that it might be hard too because i don't think jimmy kimmel was really leading at that point because uh, i think it might be intimidating i guess but it's like once again it's like are actors really – comedic actors really funny well, or do they just deliver, deliver a comedy well. well that's written? Hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. Obviously, a guy like Will Ferrell I think is probably pretty funny because he – you hear that most of his stuff is ad-libbed. Well, plus he was also – that's also different. I think, more, I think of him more as a comedian because he spent time on SNL. Sure, sure, I sure. Yeah, I guess that's there, true too. You have, you know. Yeah, but it's got to be like a, a weird wake-up call or hopefully a wake-up call for a guy like Charlie Sheen to go up in front of – 
you know, 10,000 people and not be able to entertain them without 100 people behind him writing and producing and yelling cut and making sure that he looks, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a team effort. That's yeah, what we're it, really, it really is. Well, and editing too. I mean, so much of comedy is just good editing and timing. Mm-hmm. That's got to kind of suck if you're one of those guys, though, you know? I'm really just, I, 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 I really, must really suck, yeah, to be Tom Hanks. Must I'm really terrible. disappointed to hear about that Tom Hanks interview on Jimmy Kimmel. I remember he was on the, the last episode of The Tonight Show. He was also on the first one with Conan O'Brien, mm-hmm. and he was fucking funny. Yeah, I know. But then it, makes you, it made me wonder, like, how much of that is scripted? Because mm-hmm. you know they do pre-interviews, mm-hmm. and it's all handled ahead of time. It's like, if you're Tom Hanks and you have to go on The Tonight Show, you probably have to do a pre-interview. I know that there are some celebrities who are above it. If you're Tom Hanks and you go on Jimmy Kimmel, you're probably like, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to show up here early for a pre-interview. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but your show's on at midnight. I'm just going to go off the cuff. Yeah. This is me assuming. But yeah, it just like it really felt f- fell flat, and he seemed he actually seemed kind of arrogant in mm-hmm. the interview to me. I'll see if I can find yeah. it. I'm sure hopefully they have it on well, and I their, think their website. Comedians too, like they get to be a certain age, and they're they're so established that I mean, part of comedy is just being subversive. And if you reach a certain level of success, how subversive can you be? I will say he followed up the interview with a bit, a pre recorded bit where he was uh, he had, like ha- was enrolling his daughter in like. Like a Little Miss Sunshine style beauty contest. Uh-huh. And that was very fucking funny. Hmm. Like the second he stopped being live and they went to something pre recorded where he was acting, he was, it was great. Mm-hmm. It was a well produced bit. I don't know. Well, 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 I'll check it out. I'll make sure to put it in the link dump. Also, did you know Tom Hanks' uh, youngest son is a rapper? I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. He changed his name. Not Colin Hanks, but Chet Hayes. You should yeah. look him up. Chet Hayes? Yeah. How old is he? Uh, he's 19. He goes to Northwestern, I think. And he's like a hip hop guy from the streets of Northwestern, huh? Yeah, and he's got like, he's got like such great lyrics as like, "I'm gonna stab you in the peephole with my ski pole." <laughs> That's a direct quote from his song. I heard. Wow. All yeah. <laughs> wow. So he's coming from the mean streets of Vale, apparently. <laughs> 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 anyway, he's worth a listen. All right, I'm sure we can find a, a YouTube video Chet or a website Hayes. or something. How do you how do you go from there? Like how do you go from like probably growing up in Beverly Hills as, like, the richest white kid ever to, uh, you know, from the streets rapper. <laughs> That's a tough transition to make, I bet. Well, why did he change his and, name and so he wouldn't – so he could break away from I don't a know. certain level of expectation? Or? And why Chet Hayes? That doesn't it sound – that doesn't ring like – that doesn't sound like a rapper to me. Probably no. did some, some uh, market research. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. He did, uh, like, a, a poll yeah. on Facebook. Did you ever see on Facebook. While we're talking about Tom Hanks, did you ever see uh, what's his wife's name? Um, I don't, but I can picture her. She, she was in Sleepless in Seattle. She played like the friend. Yeah. Right there. No, 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 the other one. Did you ever see? Anyway, I, I can't think of her name, so it sucks. But did you ever see the trailer for that made-for-television movie where she uh, had an invisible child? What? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's a really funny yeah. trailer. You can probably find it on YouTube. It's uh, Rita Wilson. Rita Wilson, yeah, where she plays a mom who thinks she's got a kid and she doesn't. And the whole trailer is her like pushing like a, a fucking swing and like talking to the kid, and there's nobody there, and all of her friends are like scratching their heads and going like, "What do we do? How do we?" No, help the her? movie's called Invisible Child. There you go, Invisible Child. <laughs> is it actual? I thought you, it was a joke. No, so it's no, a real movie? no, no, it's real. I've seen the trailer. Is oh it, my god, is it a drama or a comedy? Yeah, it's a drama. It's a drama. It it's came like out a, in 1999. It's like a oh, lifetime okay. movie. That's going to be a weird thing if you're in a like a celebrity couple where like your husband's career or your wife's career or whoever goes into the stratosphere and then yours really doesn't and yeah. you're left making movies like Invisible Child because you still want to work and you still want to be relevant but that's like all, all your – you don't want to like – I don't know. Just take the free jobs that your husband or wife gives you, yeah. you know, to make you feel better. Well, there's a lot of like – at least in families like that where like um, Julia Roberts' brother – Who's that? Eric Roberts? Yeah. He's in a lot of movies, but he doesn't – he's not – you wouldn't remember him. I don't remember him. Fucking love well, Eric Well, yeah, Roberts. you do because you love fucking B-movie actors. <laughs> they but... took my thumbs, Johnny. He was in Public Grand Village. <laughs> okay. Well, then what's another example? No, like, that's, that's a good example. He's Martin definitely – Martin Sheen's brother. Um, Joe Estevez? Yeah. Yeah. He's in everything, but he's in movies like Wolf or whatever. Like what was Werewolf, Werewolf and shit like that. Yeah. You ever looked up Martin Sheen's brother, Joe no. Estevez? He's been in like in 200 everything. movies. Wow. He's been in everything. And also – Hugely successful. Interesting thing about that dude. <laughs> He, if you ever think you hear Martin Sheen doing a voiceover, it's his brother. They sound identical, and his brother just gets a buttload of voice work because he sounds like Martin Sheen. Hmm. Yeah, almost every time you hear Martin Sheen and you don't see him, it's pro- it's his brother. Who was uh, the uh, the guy in Mass Effect Two? Uh, I think that was Martin Sheen, wasn't oh, it? Okay, I don't know. You'd have to because I up. thought it was Martin Sheen, but now you have me second guessing. You should look it up. It might have been his brother. But yeah, he's – and it's also interesting. Like he's been in 200 movies you've never heard of. 
uh, unless you like watch Mystery Science Theater. I, I, like he's probably rich though from that, right? Like you can't be in two hundred movies and not be rich. Yeah, because I mean, you're eventually you're getting residuals. Right? That's got to be well. I don't know about that, but you get paid. I'm sure he gets paid. You know, twenty grand or whatever to do a movie. It was Martin Sheen. Was it Martin? Yeah. yeah. And he so he takes out the good voice. That, I think yeah. <laughs> that's got to be like the weirdest kind of success. You know, like you're a fam- You could say you're a famous actor because you've got this list of credits on IMDb, and you probably drive a really nice car and have a really nice house, but no one knows who you are. You know, yeah. Unless they're watching Cinemax at three in the morning. It might actually be more fun. It might be awesome, right? Yeah, because no you don't pressure. have like people scrutinizing your every movement. And I wonder if anybody aspires to be that level of actor. I'm actress. sure. They, I mean, that's a career. That's a successful career. A very they, successful they get career. Paid, I'm sure they get paid well. And just like there are directors they're doing what they want. There are directors who make made-for-TV movies, and that's yeah. it. You or know? the people who make like giant shark versus mega octopus. And yeah, stuff like that. or even like slightly more legitimate <laughs> movies like Species Three. You know, <laughs> just like directed DVD stuff, or like I don't know. Uh, What's another one? Uh, fucking Battle... St- what was that movie we like with the guns? In space. Starship Troopers 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the I like the, the pew-pew <laughs> effect. Hey, did you know Carrie Ann Moss was the voice of Arya in Mass Effect 2? No, I didn't. I didn't. Crazy. The, 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 and did you know that Seth Green is Joker? I did know that. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> what? Crazy. <laughs> like, there's a... I was thinking the other day, there was an independent movie in the 90s that was kind of popular called The Pompadous of Love. It had uh, John Cryer in it. And I was, for whatever reason, I was thinking about that movie. And I was like, I wonder what the guy that directed that is doing now. Because, like, when it happened, it was one of those things where it's like, this guy's going to be a huge director. Mm -hmm. And he had directed a made, the last thing he had done was a made for TV movie with Vanessa Williams where she played it was like a made for TV in modern times Cinderella for the Weed Network or for Lifetime. Oh, oh. I you think can I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I was just like, I wonder like what how that what that career trajectory what, is like or how it feels. Was it the one that was um like a musical? Yeah, it was it a had musical. Jason Ale- Alexander in it? I, I don't think it even had that level. I don't think it had Jason Alexander. No, in but it. then there is one with Jason Alexander that who did it have? It had Brandy, I think, in it. Might that that sounds <laughs> that makes more sense. Uh or like the one that I think about a lot is Tobe Hooper? Do you know who Tobe Hooper is, Gus? Yeah, he directed. Uh, oh, and well, they got did. pulled for Poltergeist, right? No, well, I mean, nobody really knows, but he directed uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. and then from that he did Poltergeist. He quote unquote directed Poltergeist, and there's a lot of rumors that the production wasn't going well. And Steve, thanks, Steven Spielberg was making Indiana Jones uh, at the time, or involved in Indiana Jones. And had to like leave the set to come over and supposedly took over directing and secretly directed that movie. And there were all these stories of these epic fights between them on stage or, or like on set. Directing Poltergeist? Poltergeist. Doesn't have credit for it, but he was the executive producer. But anyway, so Toe Pooper has directing credit for Poltergeist. And then he made a movie that I love called Invaders from Mars. And then that's it. And if you look him up, he's directing like direct to DVD movies like Crocodile 3. And shit like that, you know? I think, he, I think he literally directed Piranha 2 or Piranha 3. And uh, not the 3D one, but, like, you yeah. know? And uh, I wonder, like, it's kind of sucked to be like, I made fucking Poltergeist, right? I made Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There have been, like, seven remakes of that movie. It's a horror icon film. And now I'm uh, just fucking directed DVD directing. I wonder if that's, like, if he chose that path or just, like, one day the phone stops ringing and you just got to take what you can get. I don't know. How does that work? Maybe, but... I don't know. If people are hard to work with, that's a factor. It doesn't matter if you're talented, you still. Yeah, maybe he's hard to work with. I don't, yeah, I would like to interview that guy. If anybody knows Toe Pooper, I really want to ask him. Let's get him on the podcast. Not like in a, not like in a demeaning way. I just, I'm curious, like how a, like a career goes that route and is that intentional or like is he happy with that? Maybe he didn't like the pressure of directing, you know, $50 million movies. So your interview would be, um, tell us how your career went so badly. No, just like how. It looked like you were on a bright path and then what happened? I, yeah, I would have to phrase it in a different way. How can people avoid this happening to them? (laughs) I guess. We would like to make you an example for other people. I thought our interview last week with Chris Robertson went well. Yeah, I like Chris. He's a really nice guy. I think a lot of people got a lot of positive feedback from that. Oh, really? Yeah. Were there a a, did you hear from a lot of like Chris Robertson fans? Because I know that iZombie comic is really popular. Yeah, uh, yeah. There were there were some people who commented who said that they were big fans of his and were happy to hear him on the on the podcast. That's kind of awesome. Um. That we were able to do that, and uh, I hope people don't think it sets a precedent where we're going to have other famous people on the podcast to interview because he's the only one we know. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we're that was it. Maybe in six months we'll have him back. <laughs> we'll get we'll get your massage therapist next week to talk about uh, your happy ending. Oh, there God. you go. Oh, God. 
Yay. All right, well, we should probably wrap shit up. All right, let's get out of here. Before we go too long. Let's lunch go time. Let's go find some 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 boring lunch down here f- in this area. I'm going to fight a sandwich. You're going to fight a sandwich? Let's All do right. it. All right, see ya. All right, well, thanks for listening. Ta-ta.